Hey there. Thanks for tuning in to the Freedom Update. Today I want to talk to you about Justin Trudeau's recent cabinet shuffle and my advice for his new Minister of Heritage. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Christine Van Gein, and I'm the litigation director for the legal charity, the Canadian Constitution Foundation, which, which fights for fundamental freedoms in Canada. I upload videos about developments in our cases and about interesting stories about constitutional law in Canada. If that sounds like something that you might be interested in, please hit like and subscribe below. It really helps my videos out a lot. And as always, please remember my videos are not legal advice. If you have a legal question or problem, please consult your own lawyer who can give you advice to suit your individual needs. So yesterday, Prime Minister Trudeau shuffled his cabinet and Stephen Guibault, the old Minister of Heritage, is out and he's now the Minister of the Environment. He's been replaced at Heritage by Pablo Rodriguez. Now, Mr. Rodriguez is a veteran MP, and I really think and hope that he's going to be better. Gibo was a relative political neophyte uh, who basically butchered the rollout of three really high profile initiatives from his department. He took what struck many observers, myself included, as extreme and ideological positions on internet regulation and an extremely restrictive view of freedom of expression. I actually did a few episodes of my television program, Canadian Justice, about some of those extreme positions. I'll link them below in the notes so that you can watch them. Please let me know what you think. So the new Minister of Heritage, Pablo Rodriguez, now has an opportunity to undo some of the damage that his predecessor, um, Minister Guibault, did. And these are my three pieces of advice for the new Minister of Heritage. First, Minister Rodriguez should halt any government plans to reintroduce what was formerly Bill C-10. That was a proposal to amend the Broadcasting Act. The law was a proposal for the CRTC to regulate online content to make sure that Canadian content is ranked higher in searches. Most controversially, this law would have applied even to user-generated content like YouTube videos or TikToks. Minister Guibault had stated that users with large social media presences could be considered broadcasters under the act and thus subject to government oversight and regulation. This is extreme and it's also absurd. Very few policy goals can be served by ranking Canadian cat videos higher than American cat videos. So if Bill C-10 is reintroduced, the new minister needs to make it clear that it will not apply to user-generated content. Second, Minister Rodriguez should reformulate the Joint Heritage and Justice Initiative related to hate speech, uh, formerly called Bill C-36. Bill C-36 did several things, including creating a statutory definition of hate speech. Now, hate speech is already prohibited by the criminal code, but the amendments to uh, contained in Bill C-36 expands how hate speech is regulated. The new proposed definition of hate speech contained in that proposed law uh, was speech that is likely to foment vilification or detestation. Uh, so this is really hardly a clarification at all. It remains broad and subjective, and it will impact the ability of Canadians to engage in debate on subjects that are unsettled. There are a lot of subjects out that there that are subject to debate. And a lot of the time, if you want to engage in any valid criticism of something, for example, criticism of a religion, you might be accused of uh, not criticizing the religion, but of engaging in hate against the, the people who practice that religion. Uh, this is a, a concept creep where the line between healthy criticism and encouraging violence seems to have become increasingly blurred. We don't want people who are engaging in even what might be offensive criticism to be subject to prosecution for hate crime. Another very troubling part of Bill C-36 was that it proposed the creation of a new civil remedy for hate speech. The civil remedy would allow people to bring anonymous complaints to human rights commissions at no cost to the complainant for hate speech. 
complete with monetary penalties of up to $50,000. Giving government and unelected bureaucrats at tribunals even greater control over our Canadians' freedom of expression would erode our fundamental rights, which were already struck a serious blow by Guibault's proposals in Bill C-10. While hate speech is abhorrent and should be condemned, Bill C-36 would cause a whole new set of harms. The balance in that proposal is all wrong and the legislation should be rethought entirely. The third priority for Canada's new heritage minister, Pablo Rodriguez, should be to take his predecessor's proposal to regulate online harms back to the drawing table entirely. The new online harm proposal uh, isn't a law yet. It's not even a bill. It was introduced just before the election as a technical paper and discussion guide, and the public could submit comments to the government. The government hasn't disclosed any of those comments that they received, and it doesn't appear to have any plans to do so, which itself is a major transparency problem that Minister Rodriguez should rectify. The online harm proposal was going to be legislation intended to regulate content of online media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, and Pornhub. It was going to regulate five specific types of harm, terrorism content, incitement of violence, hate speech, uh, something that's called revenge porn, uh, better called uh, non-consensual sharing of intimate images, and what we often refer to as child porn, uh, which is actually childhood sexual abuse imagery. Now, all of this content is clearly horrible and repugnant, and it's also already illegal. The Gibo proposal would not solve the problems created by these types of abhorrent content, and the proposal instead would have serious impacts on our rights. It also makes very little sense to regulate all these types of content the same way. Hate speech, as I described above, has a much more subjective definition than something like childhood sexual abuse imagery or terrorism. Regulations to deal with these different types of harm should be properly tailored to fit the specific harm, and the Gibo proposal didn't do that. The Gibo proposal also included a requirement that platforms identify and respond to content that's flagged by users as being one of those types of harm within 24 hours. For many platforms, much of the most concerning type of, of content, which is childhood sexual abuse imagery, is actually already removed automatically through artificial intelligence, which uses a technology called hashing that identifies these types of images and blocks them before they can even be uploaded. But for the more subjective content, like hate speech, it's very easily foreseeable that users of these platforms will over-report content that they don't like as hate speech, even if it doesn't rise to the level of hate speech. A user report would trigger the 24-hour requirement for the platform to address the content. If a platform fails to block or remove content, they can be subject to penalties, which run as high as 3% of global revenue, or $10 million. In some situations, the penalties can even run as high as $25 million. Given the severity of these penalties, platforms are likely to err on the side of just taking content down when there's been a report or complaint. This will likely result in a lot of non-criminal content being taken down, and this has freedom of expression implications. Germany, for example, has a 24-hour takedown requirement called the Network Enforcement Law. YouTube has published a transparency report outlining how they comply with this German law, and the vast majority of complaints relate to hate speech, not the other types of harmful content. And of the reported content, 85% didn't violate either the German law or even YouTube's community guidelines. The German law is now subject to a legal challenge by Google for violating the rights related to data protection, as well as the German constitution and European law. The Gibo proposal is similar in many ways, and in many ways actually worse, and it's also likely unconstitutional. This is now an opportunity for the new Minister of Heritage to walk that proposal back. Minister Guibault proved consistently that he's anti-free expression and anti-technology. His major initiatives were all excessive and extreme, and the communications rollout for each one was badly mangled. Canadians should keep their fingers crossed that his replacement will be an improvement, and we should demand better. Okay, that's all for this update. Thanks for tuning in, and let's keep fighting for freedom in Canada.